Thanks for watching this screencast. The objective of this screencast is learners will be able to solve a radical equation that contains one radical. So here we have the definition of a radical equation. A radical equation is any equation that contains a radical. Here are a couple of examples. Uh, 3 plus the square root of x equals 7. Here's another example. The cube root of 2x minus 6 equals 4. So any equation that contains a radical, and really of any index, whether it's a 2 or a 3 or any index, that's known as a radical equation. The steps for solving a radical equation are here. Uh, first you want to, if you can, isolate the radical. Isolate means to get it by itself on one side of the equation. Your next step would be to raise each entire side of the equation. Sometimes we forget that it's got to be the whole side. We're going to raise each entire side of the equation to the power that matches the index of the radical. Why? Well, suppose you had the fourth root of x equals 2, and you were wanting to get, you're wanting to solve this equation for x, you know now that x, the fourth root of x really means x to the one-fourth power. So, the way to undo that and just get x is to raise that to the fourth side, for the, to the fourth power rather. But if you raise the left side to the fourth power, we should do it to the right side as well. And then the final step is to solve the equation that remains, the equation that's left over. It's important to check for extraneous solutions. An extraneous solution is a value that makes you, the equation you solved true, but maybe doesn't make the original equation true. Okay, let's look at some examples now. Let's try to solve the equation 2 plus the square root of x plus 1 equals 8. The first step would be to isolate the square root of x plus 1. And I can show that or do that by subtracting 2 from each side of the equation, which will let me show that the square root of x plus 1 must then equal 6. Now, we don't write the index for a square root typically, but it is a second root. So what that tells me is that the way to uh, essentially get rid of the radical here, or to just get x plus 1 on the left side, is to square both sides of the equation. Which would give me on the left side of the equation x plus 1. On the right side I've got 6 squared, which is 36. And now I can show you that by subtracting 1 from each side of the equation, we're going to get x to be 35. Just to show that I should check that, if I let x be 35, you know the square root of 35 plus 1 would be the square root of 36. And the square root of 36 is 6, and 2 plus 6 is 8. So we've got it. I checked it. It works. Let's look at the example on the right side. We've got 10 minus the square root of 2x equals 5. Well, if I want to isolate the radical, I should really subtract 10 from both sides which will let me show that the opposite of the square root of 2x is equal to negative 5. Now, I really don't have the radical isolated yet. I really would like to get just the radical by itself. So I want to either think about what it means for this to say, like, the opposite of the square root of 2x, or think about multiplying both sides by negative 1 which would give me the expression that the square root of 2x is positive 5. Does that make sense? If the opposite of the square root of 2x is negative 5, well, then the square root of 2x is positive 5. And here, if I square both sides to just get me 2x on the left side, on the right side, I've got 25. 2x is 25. So x then would be half of that. 25 halves, which is totally okay. Or if you want to give uh, 12 and 1 half, if you're into mixed numbers, I'm cool with that too. Uh, or would even take the decimal, 12.5. If you check, uh, those all do work, because if you double the answer you got, you get the square root of 25, which is 5, and 10 minus 5 is 5. So they work. 
Let's take a look at another example. This equation says we want to solve 11 plus the square root of 2x minus 3 equals 7. To isolate the radical, I suppose I want to subtract 11 from each side of the equation. Which is going to give me the square root of 2x minus 3 equals negative 4. And here's where the, the algorithm to solve these, the process we talked about a couple of slides ago, fails us a little bit. Because I want to ask myself, is there a number whose square root would be negative 4? I'm only looking for real numbered values for x. I'm not looking for, you know, complex number solutions here. I'm only really looking for real numbers. There's not a real number that I could put in place of x that would give me anything here in the radical that would have a square root of negative 4. So if I'm presented with an equation that creates a situation where I've got a square root equaling a negative number, and it's worth pointing out that this works for square roots, if this were a cube root, it wouldn't be the case. But because of this situation, this equation has no solution. There is no real number x that I can put in for uh, this equation that would make the equation true. Okay, why don't you pause the video, see if you can solve these two equations, and when you think you've got solutions, hit play and we'll check it out. To solve 10 plus the square root of 3x equals 16, I'd like to subtract 10 from each side of the equation first which would give me the square root of 3x equals 6. Since I've got the square root of 3x and I like 3x, I'm going to square both sides, which gives me 3x equals uh, 36. And if 3x is 36, I think I can say that x is 12. Uh, just to check it, 3 times 12 is 36. The square root of 36 is 6, and 10 plus 6 is 16. So it works. To solve the square root of 5 minus x, minus 4 equals 6. Notice the significance of this negative 4 not being a part of the radic hand. That means that I really need to add 4 first to get just the radical by itself. The square root of 5 minus x equals 10. I'd like to square both sides of the equation because that will give me just 5 minus x on the left side. 10 squared is 100. So now to solve this for x, I suppose I'd like to say that maybe negative x is 100 minus 5 or that the opposite of x is 95. I think x is negative 95. And let's check it. If I let x be negative 95, 5 minus negative 95 is 5 plus 95, or 100. The square root of 100 is 10, and 10 minus 4 is 6. We've got it. Thanks for watching.